Welcome to Plasticity for Noobs Part 3. Today, we'll be taking a tour of the main tools in Plasticity. Let's dive right into the topic of navigation. But before we begin, let me give you a quick reminder. In the preferences, you can find navigation presets that offer different styles. For this discussion, I'll be using the Maya presets, as it's the one I'm most familiar with. Now let's get into the keys you'll need to know. To rotate, simply hold down Alt and left click and drag your mouse. To zoom in and out, hold down Alt and right click, then drag your mouse left or right. Alternatively, you can enable the zoom vertical option, allowing you to zoom by dragging your mouse up or down. To pan, hold down Alt and middle click, then drag your mouse. And if you want to move whatever is under your mouse cursor to the center of the screen, just hold down Alt and middle click. Next, let's talk about the viewing direction. When you're working in your 3D software, you'll want to be able to see your model from different angles. To do this, you can use the numpad on your keyboard. For the front view, simply press numpad 1. This will give you a clear view of your model from the front. If you want to see your model from the right side, press numpad 3. This will rotate your view to the right. To get a top-down view of your model, press numpad 7. This will give you a bird's eye view of your model. Now, if you want to see the back, left, or bottom view, the keys are the same, but you need to hold down the control key as well. So for example, to see the back view, you would press control plus numpad one. By using these viewing directions, you'll be able to get a better understanding of your model and make any necessary adjustments. So go ahead and give it a try. Let's start with the selection mode at the top left corner. Here we have the selection mode buttons, Number one for selection mode point. Number two for selection mode edge. Number three for selection mode face. Number four for selection mode body. Alternatively, you can simply click on any of these buttons. If you hover over them, you'll see a tooltip showing the shortcuts for each tool. To convert a selection to any other type, simply press Ctrl plus 1, 2, or 3. Now let's move to the right-hand side. Here we have some other buttons such as Switch between orthographic and perspective view, Turn overlays on off. Turn x-ray mode on off, which allows you to see through models. For example, let's say we create a sphere and then create a curve intersecting the sphere. With x-ray mode on, we can see the curve even if it's behind the model. But if we turn x-ray mode off, we won't be able to see the curve anymore. That's what x-ray mode is for. Mode is. Moving on, we can toggle the render mode on off by left clicking on the last button. We can also right click on this button to access some nice material presets such as the zebra texture. We'll take a closer look at it later when we cover more advanced topics. Now let's go to the bottom left corner. Here we have the most frequently used tools such as the move tool. Shortcut G. Each tool has its own property panel, as well as options that appear on the bottom right hand side. For example, with the Move tool active, we can press the F key for freestyle. The software will then wait for us to choose the axis we want to move our model around. We can press Shift plus Z, Shift plus X, or Shift plus Y to translate our model around the respective 3D planes. With the Move tool still active, we can use the Control or Shift keys to modify the way it behaves. For instance, by holding down Control, we can snap our model to any axis. We can also left-click and drag the white circle to freely snap our model anywhere we want.
By holding down shift, we can make finer and more precise movements. Another useful functionality is the ability to quickly move and snap our pivot around. This is made possible through the V key. Press V and you'll see the pivot attached to your cursor. Then click anywhere to place it. Finally, to place your model on the target body, simply hold down the control key, click and drag the white circle over it. The rotation tool behaves in a similar way. Press the R key to activate it. You can click on any axis to rotate your model freely. By holding down control, the rotation will be constrained by 5 degrees at a time. Alternatively, you can type the degrees in the field. After we rotate our model, you might notice that the handle is no longer aligned to world space. To align it, simply press the W key. This will align the rotation handle to world space. This will make more sense when we work on real projects and need to use these functionalities. Moving on, we have the Scale tool. Press the S key to activate it. Just like the other tools, it has options such as W to reset the handle to world space, Shift plus Z, Shift plus Y, or Shift plus X to scale across a particular 3D plane, S key to scale your model uniformly. Now let's move on to the Boolean tool, which is easily accessible by pressing the Q key. Here's an example. First, create a cube. Then, create a cylinder on top of it by choosing the Cylinder tool and left-clicking and dragging to place it. As you can see, the Boolean tool is active, so there's no need to press Q to turn it on. At this stage, you can choose which operation you want the Boolean tool to perform, such as Shift plus Q to slice, Q to join both objects, W for difference to subtract the cylinder, Shift plus E for intersecting, B key to keep the cylinder as a new body without performing any Boolean operation. T key, which will perform the Boolean operation and keep the cylinder as well. Or you can simply select the cube, press the Q key, and then subtract, union, or intersect as many objects as you want by holding down the Shift key to select multiple bodies. Next, we have the Cut Solid with Curve tool. To use this tool, you need to have a curve in the viewport. First, press the numpad one to switch to the orthographic front view. Then, click on the Line tool and define a line in front of the cube. Now, press the C key to invoke the Cut tool. Select the target body and right-click of your mouse to confirm. Voila, the cube is cut in the middle. Moving on, we have the Mirror tool. Simply select the object you want to mirror and press Alt plus X to invoke the Mirror tool. Just like any other tool, it has properties and options. Now we can mirror the cube across any axis by clicking on the handles. If your model isn't at the origin of the scene, you won't be able to properly mirror it. However, in that case, you can press the F key for freestyle, which allows you to mirror your model anyway, no matter where it's located in the 3D world. Just press F and click on the axis you'd like to mirror across. And that's a wrap for this video.
In the next one, we'll dive into a whole bunch of other awesome tools. I really hope this tour has been helpful in getting you acquainted with all the different functionalities.